So hello everyone and welcome to Neetopedia. Today we are going to start with the third chapter of our NCERT audio book from class 12th physics. That is chapter 13 nuclei. I hope you are enjoying the audio books mentioned on this channel. So let's get started. Chapter 13 nuclei. 13.1 introduction. In the previous chapter we have learned that in every atom the positive charge of and mass are densely concentrated at the center of the atom forming its nucleus. The overall dimensions of a nucleus are much smaller than those of an atom. Experiments on scattering of alpha particles demonstrated that the radius of a nucleus was smaller than the radius of an atom by a factor of about 10 to the power 4. This means the volume of a nucleus is about 10 to the power minus 12 times the volume of an atom. In other words, an atom is almost empty. If an atom is enlarged to the size of a classroom, the nucleus would be the size of a pinhead. Nevertheless, the nucleus contains most of the mass of an atom. Does the nucleus have a structure? 13.2 Atomic masses and composition of nucleus. The mass of an atom is very small compared to a kilogram. For example, the mass of a carbon atom C12 is 1.992647 into 10 to the power minus 26 kg. Kilogram is not a very convenient unit to measure such small quantities. Therefore, a different mass unit is used for expressing atomic masses. This unit is the atomic mass unit defined as 1 by 12th of the mass of the carbon atom. According to this definition, 1 u is equal to mass of 1 ce12 atom upon 12. which is equal to 1.660539 into 10 to the power minus 27 kg the atomic masses of various elements expressed in atomic mass unit are close to being integral multiples of mass of a hydrogen atom they are however many striking exceptions to this rule for example the atomic mass of chlorine atom is 35.46 u Accurate measurement of atomic masses is carried out with a mass spectrometer. The measurement of atomic masses reveals the existence of different types of atoms of the same element which exhibit the same chemical properties but differ in mass. Such atomic species of the same element differing in masses are called isotopes. It is found that practically every element consists of a mixture of several isotopes. The relative abundance of different isotopes differs from element to element. Chlorine for example has two isotopes having masses 34.98 u 35.47 u which agrees with the atomic mass of chlorine. Even the lightest element hydrogen has three isotopes having masses 1.00878 u 2.0141 u and 3.0160 u. The nucleus of the lightest element hydrogen has relative abundance of 99.985% is called proton. The mass of proton is equal to 1.00727u which is equal to 1.67262 into 10 to the power minus 27 kg. This is equal to the mass of the hydrogen atom minus the mass of a single electron. The two isotopes of hydrogen are deuterium and tritium. Tritium nuclei mass. The positive charge in the nucleus is that of the protons. A proton carries out one unit of fundamental charge and is stable. It was earlier thought that the nucleus may contain electrons, but this was ruled out later using argument based on quantum theory. All the electrons of an atom are outside the nucleus. We know that the number of these electrons outside the nucleus of the atom is z the atomic number the total charge of the atomic electrons is thus minus z e and since the atom is neutral the charge on the nucleus is plus z e the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom is therefore exactly z the atomic number discovery of neutron Since the nuclei of deuterium and tritium are isotopes of hydrogen, they must contain only one proton each. But the masses of the nuclei of hydrogen, deuterium and tritium are in the ratio 1 is to 2 is to 3. Therefore, the nuclei of deuterium and tritium must contain in addition to a proton some neutral matter. 
the amount of neutral matter present in the nuclei of these isotopes expressed in the unit of mass of a proton is approximately equal to 1 and 2 respectively. This fact indicates that the nuclei of atom contain in addition to proton neutral matter in multiples of a basic unit. This hypothesis was verified in 1932 by James Chadwick who observed emission of neutral radiation when particles called neutrons. From conservation of energy and momentum, he was able to determine the mass of new particle as nearly same as mass of a proton. The mass of neutron is now known to a high degree of accuracy. It is 1.00866 mu which is equal to 1.6749 into 10 to the power minus 27 kg. Chadwick was awarded the 1935 Nobel Prize in Physics for his discovery of neutron. A free neutron, unlike a free proton, is unstable. It decays into a proton, an electron and an antineutrino and has a mean life of about 1000 seconds. It is however stable inside the nucleus. The composition of a nucleus can now be described using the following terms and symbols. Z is the atomic number which is equal to number of protons. N is the neutron number which is equal to number of neutrons. And A is the mass number which is equal to Z plus N that is total number of protons and neutrons. One also uses the term nucleon for a proton or a neutron. Thus, the number of nucleons in an atom is its mass number A. Nuclear species or nuclides are shown by the notations. The composition of isotopes of an element can now be readily explained. The nucleus of isotopes of a given element contain the same number of protons but differ from each other in the number of neutrons. Deuterium, which is an isotope of hydrogen, contains one proton and one neutron. Its other isotope, tritium, contains one proton and two neutrons. The element gold has 32 isotopes ranging from A equals to 173 to A equals to 204. We have already mentioned that chemical properties of elements depend on their electronic structure. As the atoms of isotopes have identical electronic structure, they have identical chemical behavior and are placed in the same location in the periodic table. All nucleides with 13.33 the size of the nucleus. As we have seen in chapter 12, Rutherford was a pioneer who postulated and established the existence of the atomic nucleus. At Rutherford's suggestion, Gregor and Madsen performed the classic experiment on the scattering of alpha particles from thin gold foils. Their experiments revealed that the distance of closest approach to a gold nucleus of an alpha particle of kinetic energy 5.5 milli electron volt is about 4.0 into 10 to the power minus 14 meter. The scattering of alpha particle by gold sheet could be understood by Rutherford by assuming that the Coulomb repulsive force was solely responsible for scattering. Since the positive charge is confined to the nucleus, the actual forming scattering experiments in which fast electrons instead of alpha particles are projectiles that bombard targets made up of various elements the sizes of nuclei of various elements have been accurately measured. This has been found that nucleus of mass number A has radius R equals to R0 A to the power 1 by 3, where R0 is equal to 1.2 into 10 to the power minus 15 meter. This means the volume of the nucleus which is proportional to R cube is proportional to A. Thus, Density of nucleus is a constant, independent of A, for all nuclei. Different nuclei are like drop of liquid of constant density, which has large amount of empty space. Now I am skipping example 3.1 for you to solve it later or you can pause the video and solve it right now. 13.4 Mass Energy and Nuclear Binding Energy 13.4.1 Mass Energy Einstein showed from his theory of special relativity that it is necessary to treat mass of another form of energy. 
before the advent of this theory of special relativity it was presumed that mass and energy were conserved separately in a reaction however einstein showed that mass is another form of energy and one can convert mass energy into other forms of energy say kinetic energy and vice versa einstein gave the famous mass energy equivalence relation e is equal to mc square here the energy equivalent of mass m is related with the above equation and c is the velocity of light in vacuum and is approximately equal to 12.3 for you to solve later or you can pause the video and solve it right now experimental verification of einstein's mass energy relation has been achieved in the study of nuclear reactions amongst nucleons nuclei electrons and other more recently discovered particles in a reaction The conservation law of energy states that the initial energy and the final energy are equal provided the energy associated with mass is also included. This concept is important in understanding nuclear masses and the interaction of nuclei with one another. They form the subject matter of next few sections. For 13.4.2 nuclear binding energy In section 13.2 we have seen that nucleus is made up of neutrons and protons therefore it may be expected that mass of the nucleus is equal to total number of individual protons and neutrons however the nuclear mass m is found to be always less than this for example let us consider oxygen a nucleus which has 8 neutrons and 8 protons we have mass of 8 neutron equal to 8 mu and 8 proton is equal to 8 mu therefore the expected mass of oxygen nucleus is equal to 8 into 2.01593 mu which is equal to 16.12744 mu the atomic mass of oxygen found from mass spectroscopy experiments is seen to be 15.99493 mu subtracting the mass of 8 electrons from this we get the experimental mass of oxygen nucleus to be 15.99053 mu what is the meaning of the mass defect it is here that einstein's equivalence of mass and energy plays a role since the mass of the oxygen nucleus is less than the sum of masses of its constituents the equivalent energy of the oxygen nucleus is less than the sum of the equivalent energies of its constituents If one wants to break the oxygen nucleus into 8 protons and 8 neutrons this extra energy delta mc square has to apply this energy required eb is related to the mass defect by eb equals to delta mc square now i'm skipping example 30.3 for you to solve it later or you can pause the video and solve it right now If a certain number of neutrons and protons are brought together to form nucleus of certain charge and mass and energy eb will be released in the process the energy eb is called the binding energy of the nucleus if we separate a nucleus into two nucleons we would have to apply a total energy equal to eb to those particles although we cannot tear apart a nucleus in its way The nuclear binding energy is still a convenient measure of how well a nucleus is held together. A more useful measure of binding between the constituents of the nucleus is the binding energy per nucleon EBN, which is the ratio of binding energy EB of a nucleus to the number of nucleons in the nucleus. Now EBN is equal to EB upon A, where A is the mass number. We can think of binding energy per nucleon as the average energy per nucleon needed to separate a nucleus into its individual nucleons. Figure 13.1 is a plot of the binding energy per nucleon EBN versus the mass number for a large number of nuclei. We notice the following main features of the plot. Number 1, the binding energy per nucleon EBN is practically constant. that is practically independent of the atomic number of nuclei of middle mass number the curve has a maximum of about 8.75 mega electron volt for a is equal to 56 and has a value of 7.6 mega electron volt for a is equal to 
Number two, the EBN is lower for both light nuclei and heavy nuclei. We can draw some conclusions from these two observations. Number one, the force is attractive and sufficiently strong to produce a binding energy of a few mega electron volt per nucleon. Number two, the constancy of the binding energy in the range 30 is less than A is less than 170 is a consequence of the fact that nuclear force is short ranged. Consider a particular nucleon inside a sufficiently large nucleus, it will be under the influence of only some of its neighbors, which come within the range of nuclear force. If any other nucleon is a distance more than the range of the nuclear force from a particular nucleon, it will have no influence on the binding property that a given nucleon influences only nucleons close to it is also referred to as saturation property of nuclear force. Number 3. A very heavy nucleus, say A is equal to 240, has lower binding energy per nucleon compared to that of a nucleus with A is equal to 120. Thus, if a nucleus A is equal to 240 breaks into two A is equal to 120 nuclei, nucleons get more tightly bound. This implies energy would be released in the process. It has a very important implications for energy production through fission. Number 4. Consider two very light nuclei of A is less than or equal to 10 joining to form a heavier nucleus. The binding energy 13.5 nuclear force. The force that determines the motion of atomic electrons is the familiar Coulomb force. In section 13.4, we have seen that for average mass nuclei, the binding energy per nucleon is approximately 8 mega electron volt, which is much larger than the binding energy in atoms. Therefore, to bind a nucleus together, there must be a strong attractive force of a totally different kind. It must be strong enough to overcome the repulsion between protons and to bind protons and neutrons into tiny nuclear volume. We have already seen that the constancy of binding energy per nucleon can be understood in terms of its short range. Many features of the nuclear binding number 1. Nuclear force is much stronger than the Coulomb force acting between charges or the gravitational force between masses. The nuclear binding force has to dominate over the Coulomb repulsive force between protons inside the nucleus. This happens only because the nuclear force is much stronger than the Coulomb force. The gravitational force is much weaker even than the Coulomb force. Number 2. The nuclear force between two nucleons falls rapidly to zero as the distance is more than a few femtometers. This leads to a saturation of forces in a medium or a large sized nucleus which is the reason for constancy of the binding energy for a nucleon. A rough thought that the force is attractive for distance of femtometer. Number 3. Nuclear force between neutron-neutron, proton-neutron and proton-proton is approximately the same. The nuclear force does not depend on the electric charge. Unlike Coulomb's law or Newton's law of gravitation, there is no simple mathematical form of nuclear force. 13.6 Radioactivity A. H. Bequerel discovered the radioactivity in 1896 purely by accident. While studying the fluorescence and phosphorescence of compounds irradiated with visible light, Bequerel observed an interesting phenomenon. After illuminating some pieces of uranium potassium sulfate with visible light, he wrapped them in a black paper and separated the package from a photographic plate by a piece of silver. When after several hours of exposure, the photographic plate was developed, it showed blackening due to something that had been emitted by the compound and was able to penetrate both black paper and the silver. Experiment performed subsequently showed that radioactivity and nuclear phenomenon 13.6.1 Law of Radioactivity In any radioactive sample which undergoes alpha, beta or gamma decay, it is found that the number of nuclei undergoing the decay per unit time is proportional to the total number of nuclei in the sample. If n is the number of nuclei in the sample and delta n undergoes decay in time delta t, then delta n upon delta t is directly proportional to n. 
or delta n upon delta t is equal to lambda n where lambda is called the radioactive decay constant or disintegration constant the change in the number of nuclei in the sample is dn equals to delta n and time delta t thus the rate of change of n is dn by dt equals to minus or dn upon n is equal to minus lambda dt now integrating both the sides of the equation we get ln n minus ln n not is equal to minus lambda t minus t not here n not is the number of radioactive nuclei in the sample at some arbitrary time t not and n is the number of radioactive nuclei at any subsequent time t setting t not equals to 0 and rearranging the equation gives us ln n upon n not is equal to minus lambda t which gives n t is equal to n not e to the power minus lambda t note for example light bulbs follow no such exponential decay law if we test 1000 bulbs for their life we expect that they will decay at more or less the same time the decay of radionuclides follow a quite different law the law of radioactive decay represented by the given equation the total decay r of a sample is the number of nuclei disintegrating per unit time suppose in a time interval dt the decay count measured is delta n then dn is equal to minus delta n the positive quantity r is then defined as r is equal to minus dn by minus lambda t this is equivalent to the raw law of radioactive decay since you can integrate the equation to get back another equation clearly r not is equal to lambda n not is the decay rate at t is equal to 0 the decay rate r at a certain time t and the number of undecayed nuclei n at the same time are related by r is equal to lambda n the decay rate of a sample rather than the number of radioactive nuclei is more direct experimentally measurable quantity and is given a specific name activity the si unit of activity is bequerel named after the discoverer of radioactivity henry bequerel one bequerel is simply simply equal to one disintegration or decay per second there is also another unit named curie which is widely used and is related to si unit as 1 curie is equal to 10 3.7 into 10 to the power 10 decays per second that is equal to 3.7 into 10 to the power 10 bequerel different radionuclides differ greatly in their rate of decay a common way to characterize this feature is through a notion of half life half life of a radionuclide is the time it takes for a sample that has initially say n not radionuclei to reduce to n not upon 2 putting n not is n equals to n not upon 2 t equals to t half if n not reduces to half its value in time t half r not will also reduce to half its value in the same time another related measure is the average or mean life time this gain can be obtained from the equation the number of nuclei which decay at time interval t to t plus delta t is r each of them has lived for some time t thus total life of these nuclei would be t lambda n not e to the power minus lambda t delta t it is clear that some nuclei may live for short time while others may live longer therefore to obtain the mean life we have to sum this expression over all times from 0 to infinity and divide by total number n not of nuclei at t is equal to 0 thus solve with the following t half is equal to ln 2 upon lambda is equal to tau ln 2 radioactive elements are short lived that is have half lives much less than the age of the new universe have obviously decayed long ago and are not found in nature they can however be produced artificially in nuclear reactions i'm skipping example 13.4 to solve later or you can pause the video and solve it right now i'm skipping 13.5 as well 13.6.2 alpha decay 
a well known example of alpha decay is decay of uranium to thorium with the emission of a helium nucleus in alpha decay the mass number of the product nucleus is four less than the decaying nucleus while the atomic number decreases by 2 in general alpha decay of a parent nucleus results in a daughter nucleus from einstein's mass energy equivalence relation and energy conservation it is clear that the spontaneous decay is possible only when total mass of the decay products is less than the mass of the initial nucleus this difference in mass appears as kinetic energy of the products by referring to a table of nuclear mass alpha decay q is equal to mx minus my minus m helium into c square q is also the net kinetic energy gained in the process or the initial nucleus x is at rest the kinetic energy of the products clearly q is greater than 0 for exothermic processes such as alpha decay i'm skipping example 13.6 for you to solve later or you can pause the video and solve it right now 13.6.3 beta decay in beta decay a nucleus spontaneously emits an electron or a positron a common example of beta minus decay is phosphorus being decayed to sulfur plus electron plus anti neutrino and that of beta plus decay is sodium being disintegrated into neon plus positron plus neutrino the decays are governed by the equations so that one can never predict which nucleus will undergo decay but one can characterize the decay by a half life t half for example t half for the decays above is respectively 14.3d and 2.6 years the emission of electron in beta minus decay is accompanied by the emission of anti neutrino in beta plus decay instead a neutrino is generated neutrinos are neutral part in both beta minus and beta plus decay the mass number a remains unchanged in beta minus decay the atomic number z of the nucleus goes up by 1 while in beta plus decay z goes down by 1 the basic nuclear process underlying beta minus decay is the conversion of neutron to proton while for beta plus decay it is conversion of proton into neutron note that while a free neutron decays into proton the decay of proton to neutron is possible only inside the nucleus since proton has smaller mass than neutron 13.6.4 gamma decay like an atom a nucleus also has discrete energy levels the ground state and excited state the scale of energy is however very different atomic energy level spacings are of the order of electron volt while the difference in nuclear energy level is of the order of mega electron volt when a nucleus in an excited state spontaneously decays to its ground state a photon is emitted with energy equal to the difference in the two energy levels of the nucleus this is the so called gamma decay the energy corresponds to radiation of extremely short wavelengths shorter than the hard x-ray radiation typically a gamma ray is emitted when a alpha or beta decay results in daughter nucleus in a 13.7 nuclear energy the curve of binding energy per nucleon ebn given in figure 13.1 has a long flat middle region between a equals to 30 to a equals to 170 in this region the binding energy per nucleon is nearly constant for lighter nuclear region that is a equals a is less than 30 and for heavier nuclear region that is a is greater than 30 the binding energy per nucleon is less than 8 mega electron volt as we have noted earlier now the greater the binding energy less is the total mass of a bound system such as nucleus consequently if nuclei with less total binding energy transformed into nuclei with greater binding energy there will be a net energy ball are in the range of electron volts on the other hand in nuclear reaction the energy release is of the order of mega electron volt thus for the same quantity of matter nuclear processes 
produce a million times more energy than a chemical source. Fusion of 1 kg uranium for example generates 10 to the power 14 joule of energy. Compare it with burning of 1 kg of coal that gives 10 to the power 7 joule. 13.7.1 Fission New possibilities emerge when we go beyond natural radioactive decays and study nuclear reactions by bombarding nuclei with other nuclear particles such as proton, neutron, alpha particle, etc. A most important neutron induced nuclear reaction is fission. An example of fission is when a uranium isotope U-235 is bombarded with a neutron breaks into two immediate mass nu nuclear fragments. The same reaction can produce other pairs of immediate mass fragments. The fragment products are radioactive nuclei. They emit beta particles in succession to achieve stable end products. The energy released in the fission reaction of nuclei like uranium is of the order 200 mega electron volt per fissioning nucleus. This is estimated as follows. Let us take a nucleus with A equals to 240 breaking into two fragments each of A equals to 120. Then EBN for A equals to 240 nucleus is about 7.6 mega electron volt and EBN for the 2 A equals to 120 fragment nuclei is about 8.5 mega electron volt. Therefore gain in binding energy for nucleon is about 0.9 mega electron volt. Hence the total gain in binding energy is 240 into 0.9 13.7.2 nuclear reactor. Notice one fact of great importance in fission reactions, there is a release of extra neutron in the fission process. Averagely, two and a half neutrons are released per fission of uranium nucleus. It is a fraction since some of the fission events, two neutrons are produced and in some three, etc. The extra neutron in turn can initiate fission processes, producing still more neutrons and so on leads to the possibility of chain reaction as was first suggested by Erinko Fermi. If the chain reaction is controlled suitably, we can get a steady energy output. This is what happens in a nuclear reactor. If the chain reaction is uncontrolled, it leads to explosive energy output in a nuclear bomb. There is however a hurdle in sustaining a chain reaction. As described here, it is known experimentally that slow neutrons that are thermoneutrons are much more likely to cause fission in uranium than fast neutrons. Also, fast neutrons liberated in fission would escape instead of causing another fission reaction. The average energy of a neutron produced in fission of uranium is 2 mega electron volt. These neutrons, unless slowed down, will escape from the reactor without interacting with the uranium nuclei unless a very large amount of fissionable material is used for sustaining the chain. All used are water, heavy water and graphite. The Apsara reactor at the Baba Atomic Research Centre Mumbai uses water as moderator. The other Indian reactors which are used for power production use heavy water as moderator. Because of the use of moderator, it is possible that the ratio K of number of fission produced by a given generation of neutrons to the number of fission of the preceding generation may be greater than 1. This ratio is called multiplication factor. It is the measure of the growth of rate of neutrons in the reactor. For K equals to 1, the operation of the reactor is said to be critical, which is what we wish it to be for a steady power operation. If K becomes greater than 1, the reaction rate and the reactor power increases exponentially. Unless the factor K is brought down very close to unity, the reactor will become supercritical and can even explode. The explosion of Chernobyl reactor in Ukraine in 1986 is a sad. The reaction rate is controlled through control rods made out of neutron absorbing materials such as cadmium. In addition to control rods, reactors are provided with safety rods which when required can be inserted into the reactor and K can be reduced rapidly to less than unity. The more abundant isotope uranium in naturally occurring uranium is non fissionable When it captures a neutron, it produces slightly high radioactive plutonium through these reactions. Plutonium undergoes fission with slow neutrons. 
Figure 13.5 shows the schematic diagram of a nuclear reactor based on thermal nuclear fission. The core of the reactor is the site of nuclear fission. It contains the fuel elements in suitably fabricated form. The fuel may be enriched uranium that has greater abundance than naturally occurring uranium. The core contains a moderator to slow down the neutrons. The core is surrounded by a reflector to reduce leakage. The energy released in the fusion is continuously removed by a suitable coolant. A containment vessel prevents the escape of radioactive fusion products. The whole assembly is shielded to check the harmful radiation from coming out. The reactor can be shut down by means of rods that have high absorption of neutrons. The coolant transfers heat to a working fluid which in turn may produce steam. The steam derives turbines and generates electricity. Like any power reactor, nuclear reactors generate considerable weights need special care for treatment since they are radioactive and hazardous. Elaborate safety measures both for reactor operation as well as handling and reprocessing the spent fuel are required. These safety measures are distinguishing features of the Indian Atomic Energy Program. An appropriate plan is being evolved to study the possibility of converting radioactive waste into less active and short-lived material. 13.7.3 Energy Gen Nuclear Fusion Energy Generation in Stars When two light nuclei fuse to form larger nucleus, energy is released. Since larger nucleus is more tightly bound as seen from binding energy curve, some examples of such energy liberating nuclear reactions are protium plus protium gives deuterium, deuterium plus deuterium gives tritium. In the first reaction, two protons combine to form a deuteron and a positron with release of 0.42 mega electron volt energy. In the reaction, Two deuterons combined from a light isotope of helium. In the next reaction, two deuterons combined to form a triton and a proton. For fusion to take place, two nuclei must come close enough so that attractive short-range nuclear force is able to affect them. However, since they are both positively charged particles, they experience Coulomb repulsion. They therefore must have enough energy to overcome this Coulomb barrier. The height of the barrier depends on the charges and radii of the two interacting nuclei. It can be shown for example that the barrier height of two protons is 400 kN proton gas would have enough energy to overcome the Coulomb barrier. 3 by 2 kT is equal to K is equal to 400 kilo electron volt which gives T approximately equal to 3 into 10 to the power 9 Kelvin. When fusion is achieved by raising the temperature of the system so that particles have enough kinetic energy to overcome the Coulomb repulsive behavior, this is called thermonuclear fusion. The thermonuclear fusion is the source of energy output in the interior of stars. In the interior of the sun has temperature of about 1.5 into 10 to the power 7 Kelvin, which is considerably less than the estimated temperature required for fusion whose energies are much more above the average energy. The fusion reaction in the sun is a multi-step process in which hydrogen is burned into helium. Thus, for the fourth reaction to occur, the first three reactions must occur twice, in which case two light helium nuclei unite to form ordinary helium nucleus. And if we consider the combination, the net effect is that one Hydrogen plus 2 electron gives helium plus 2 neutrino plus gamma plus 26.7 mega electron volt energy. Thus, four hydrogen atoms combine to form an helium atom with a release of 26.7 mega electron volt energy. Helium is not the only element that can be synthesized in the interior of a star. As the hydrogen is the core gets depleted and becomes helium, the core starts to cool. The star begins to collapse under its own gravity, which increases the temperature at the core. If this temperature increases to about 10 to the power 8 Kelvin, fusion takes place again, this time of helium nuclei into carbon. This kind of process can generate through fusion higher and higher mass number elements. But elements 
more masses than those near the peak of the binding energy curve cannot be so produced the age of the sun is about 5 into 10 to the power 9 years and it is estimated that there is enough hydrogen in the sun to keep it going for another 5 billion years after that the hydrogen burning will stop and the sun will begin to cool and will start to collapse under gravity which will raise the core temperature the outer envelope of the sun will expand 3.7.4 controlled thermonuclear fusion the natural thermonuclear fusion process in a star is replicated in a thermonuclear fusion device in controlled fusion reactors the aim is to generate steady power by heating the nuclear fuel to a temperature in the range of 10 to the power 8 kelvin at these temperatures the fuel is a mixture of positive ions and electrons the challenge is to confine this plasma since no container can stand such a high temperature Several countries around the world, including India, are developing techniques in this connection. If successful, fusion reactors will be hopefully supply almost unlimited power to humanity. I am skipping example 13.7 for you to solve it later, but you can pause the video and solve it right now. So here we come to the end of the chapter. I hope you enjoyed this audiobook. Then subscribe to the channel and stay tuned to it for more NCERT audiobooks. Till then, keep studying.